Sorry. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Gaurav Bhatia. I'm, I'm a property investment advisor from Equimax Property Group. And today I'm going to be talking about anything to do with property investment, current Australian market, and how strategy and research can help you succeed in property investments only on uh, Prosperity Show today with Prosper. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you Gaurav Bhatia, who happens to be an, a property investment advisor based here in Melbourne. Now, Gaurav, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic. The sun is out. It's a beautiful day. Can't complain. Oh, I love that. I love that about Melbourne, man, because, I mean, obviously at the end of the day, we've had a really good weekend and the sun is shining today. But... Besides that, we really want to, um, you know, touch up on your work and what it is that you do. Now, to the viewers at home, um, I have been advised by the people that actually pay bills here at Live Long Digital to, ma to make sure that you are aware that the information we're going to be providing on this show today is of a general interest only. You need to seek financial advice from your own financial advisor. Now that we've got all that information out of the way, we're bringing you Gurav. Now, Gurav is a property advisor and he will assist you in building a portfolio of properties in a secure and efficient manner. What he does is help you structure your investment um, and financing property and guide you through the pro process of investing suitable locations and uh, properties. He will also help you avoid, avoid all the mistakes and high-risk options that come along with property investment. Now, Gura, tell us a little bit about how you actually got started and where, um, you know, Equimax Property Group is at at the moment. Yeah, sure. Look, um, thank you for having me on the show. And it's great to be able to share my story and my journey in terms of, you know, what I've been through. So I started my journey, um, you know, quite early. Um, I started uh, my, a business back in 2005 in a, in a telecom industry. In that industry, I was able to, as I started as a sole trader and I was able to scale up that particular business to be able to employ multiple staff members, have a really good team around me and have a sustainable business. Um, due to some economic changes and due to some, you know, uh, changes in um, uh, um, industry structures, um, I kind of came to a realization that while businesses are great, there's no such thing as businesses forever. Every single business has a use by date. Every single business has an end date. Uh, and you have to keep pivoting and you have to keep evolving. And one of the things that I evolved into was, you know, diversifying my investments so rather than just having all my eggs in one basket, which is having a particular successful business, I diversified in property investments. And that's the vehicle that I chose at that particular time. So this was about you know, 10, 11 years ago. So I've been involved in that investment space for about 11 years. And since then, what I have been doing is been obviously understanding markets, studying and creating investment strategies and property investments as I go along for my journey. I've learned a lot along the way from different people. And one of the things I'm very big on is you know, learning continuously because there's no such thing as, you know, everyone knows at all. And now what I do, um, you know, I started Equimax um, just under three years ago. And now I use my time and skill and knowledge to be able to share that knowledge with others so others can kind of learn from the same experiences that I had. And I'm able to share that with them when it comes to property investments. Fantastic. That's such a uh, profound journey. I mean, obviously, when you started off in telecommunications, um, that would have been, you know, what was prevalent during that time. And as we are starting to see, you know, the rise of inflation and also interest rates within the property market, um, how volatile is this industry currently? And what sort of education do people really need in order to um, be successful in the property market? Great question. There's a lot of media hype at the moment in terms of, you know, cost of living, in terms of interest rates going up, in terms of, you know, a lot of new homeowners that are wanting to come into the property market, not having the ability to be able to get into the market or be able to afford it. And yes, this is a challenge and this is a challenge, something that Australia as a country, we will collectively have to you know, uh, deal with and have to have um, different strategies to be able to help homeowners. 
But when we're talking particularly about property investments, which is very different to a first time homeowner, one of the things that um, a lot of people have to understand, property investment is not a get rich quick scheme. It never was and it never will be. Property investment is all about an eight to 10 year journey. When we look at Australia as an economy and as a country, on an average, you know, if you look at last 30 years of data in Australia, property grows by about 7.8 to 8% per annum on average, past 30 years. Now, in that time frame, are we going to have uh, periods like what we saw just during the COVID period where we almost saw close to, you know, 30 to 40% growth? Of course. And then there are some years where we might have a negative growth of about 5 to 7% which we are seeing at the moment. Doesn't necessarily mean that the market is going to continue to go down or to continue to go up. When you are holding on to an asset for a 10 year period, you're going to have a wave and you're gonna have ups and downs. And one of the things as an investor we look for before buying any particular asset is its financial modeling and, to be, and for our ability to be able to hold on to that particular asset during those harder times. If we do not have the ability to hold on to that asset and we have overcapitalized or overborrowed from the bank, then first thing that I would do as an investor or any investor will do is liquidate or sell that asset and that's the end of the journey. So before we get into the industry or before we actually get into buying a property, make sure we have a good eight to 10 year plan. Otherwise there's no point getting into property investments. Fantastic. So from what I'm hearing, uh, properties tend to double in, you know, their value sort of every 10 to 14 years. And what you encourage people is to, um, you know, conduct what is called a buy and hold strategy. Now, if somebody's going to be holding a property for that long, how do you actually assess the potential return of investment of a property? So there's a couple of different ways to look at it. Now, there is no such thing as one size fits all. Every investor has different requirements. Every investor is in a different space in the market. They may have a different goal for their journey, but this is one of the strategies in you know, a buy and hold. Um, now, when one of the things we look for when we're looking at buy and hold is the rental yield in terms of what we can expect from that particular property. Um, also, one of the other things we look at is are there any taxation benefits such as you know, depreciation, which is one of the big aspects for a brand new property that we allows us to be able to get some taxation credits based on what we are currently earning. Modeling all of that and also looking at your outgoing, so your land rights, your water rights, your landlord insurance, your property management fees, your ongoing maintenance, and so on and so on, we're able to look at a net yield that a particular property will deliver. Now, that net yield might be, or net return might be, you know, sitting at, for example, the property is costing you $300 a month. Do you have the ability to be able to hold on to that asset at $300 a month? Or are you going to be putting strain on your day-to-day -day lifestyle because now you have to come up with that extra $300 a month? And that is based on a current climate of about 5 to 5.5% interest rate. One of the things in planning is very important is doing a stress test. What that means is in the current market, you know, we are anticipating that we are probably going to see another two to three interest rate hikes. That means interest rate will realistically be at about six to six and a half percent. What's your ability to hold on to that asset once the interest rate hits six, six and a half percent? That means, you know, instead of costing you $300 a month, it might cost you $400 a month. Can you afford it? If you can't, then let's not overcapitalize and go and buy a $700,000 property. Let's look at a $500 or a $550,000 property. So at least it's not putting strain onto your day-to-day -day lifestyle. Absolutely. And one thing that normally happens, and I really appreciate you, you know, showing that sort of balance of risk and reward in, in, in the investment sort of process and how you actually, um, you know, help people through that. There, you did mention something about continuously learning. How do you uh, obviously um, maybe stay informed about the changes in the real estate market? And are you maybe adjusting your um, investment strategy along um, with the changes or do you just, you know, uh, set and forget? You know, there's no such thing as a set and forget because then what we're doing is um, we are hoping that we are going to get the result. 
as compared to working on our portfolio. So one of the things that I do in my personal property and something that I do for my clients is, is an annual review. So what we do is we look at a portfolio or a property. Now, portfolio may have one property, may have five. It's irrelevant. But if we have a particular property, we want to be able to review that on a yearly basis. Are we on the best market interest rate? You know, can we get a better interest rate from a different bank? Can we go back to our bank and get a better interest rate? You know, whether it's a 0.2% or 0.3%, at the end of the day, it's better off in your pocket as an investor than you having to pay for it. Are we getting the right amount of rental yield that we showed, rental returns or rental income on a weekly basis? You know, we had a recent client where they were getting about $400 a week on their rental property. Looking at that analysis, looking at you know, their overview and analysis, we realized that the other properties in the market were getting about $430 to $440 a week. Going back to a real estate agent, um, we said, why aren't we getting that particular return? And it just so happened to be in this particular case, the real estate agent wasn't proactive enough. But now being able to change that, we are now earning an extra $40 a week which is close to about you know two and a half thousand dollars per annum. So review your portfolio on a yearly basis. Market will continue changing year on year. There are going to be different strategies, um, but once you're reviewing your portfolio, you'll understand what the climate is. Absolutely, and um, I really like how you are walking your clients through an annual review because so many people just think if they've bought a property, that's it, you know, um, it will sort itself out. And also you did mention the example of a real estate agent that, um, you know, was not being proactive in order to actually, uh, you know, get a better yield for the investor. Now, what are some of the common mistakes that you're seeing investors making, especially when it comes to investing in real estate? Oh, um, look, I'll, there's a few, but the three top common mistakes that I probably would say is majority of the people end up getting advice, and I will put it in an apostrophe, from a well-meaning family and friends over a Saturday barbecue, um, but your friends aren't professionals. You, know, you would not go get a legal advice from a friend. You would go to a lawyer. You would not get a medical advice from a friend. You will go to a doctor. Similarly, when you are looking at putting your hard-earned money into a free market, get advice from an industry professional. Second mistake that I see that happening um, in the market is a lot of people buy properties based on emotion rather than facts and data. So as a result of that, what ends up happening is they end up buying an investment property in a location where they currently live or they know of as compared to a location that they have researched. At the end of the day, buying an investment property is a business decision and it needs to be treated that way so you can make a decision based on research, facts, and more importantly, on financial modeling and understanding the numbers as to what return you're going to get. And the third, one of the third biggest ones as a result of the top two, what ends up happening is they end up buying a highly negatively geared property which they cannot afford and they end up selling that after two or three years and end up exiting the market thinking they haven't had a great experience. So it all comes down from starting your journey, making sure you have the right advice, you're doing your research, understanding where, what your outcome is, knowing your numbers and buying a property based on a business decision. If you do those four things, you are bound to have a good result. Fantastic. You did mention something that is the bane of the existence of every, um, you know, real estate investor who's getting started. Auntie Sally, the lady who sits at the <laughs> corner, the lady who sits at the corner of a dinner table and is always giving the, you know, advice that they're receiving from TV and things of that nature. Now, without being rude and also without uh, disrespecting the people that are sort of well-meaning, like you say, what, what, how do you then um, advise people to uh, circumvert that, um, you know, advice that they're receiving from, like you say, well-meaning uh, relatives? Because that's, that's the first point of call. Yep. Uh, you're absolutely right. So it is, um, it's hard because at the end of the day, they already have a relationship with that family member. But what it comes down to is comes down to education and it comes down to knowledge. 
So one of the things that I like to do with my clients is to be able to show them raw data, show them um, some market updates, show them market insights, and put it in perspective as to why is the first reason or what is the first reason we are actually looking at investing in property. Property to me is just a product. At the end of the day, we're using that product to deliver an outcome. If we are going to go and base it on someone's advice and we are not going to reach that outcome, there's no point getting into it in the first place. So if, you know, and it might be that the family member was correct. We don't know, you know, we were just, um, that's one of the mistakes. But then if that is the correct uh, solution, then let's at least make sure that we have the research done. Research may look at, you know, infrastructure in the area. It may look at, um, you know, schools, hospitals, public transport, vacancy rate, occupancy rate, owner-occupier versus investor ratio, you know, rental yields. What can we expect from that area from a growth point of view over the period of next eight to 10 years? Because our goal is to hold on to that asset for eight to 10 years. If we haven't done that, then we are gambling and we are speculating and investment is not about speculation. In investment is about making informed decisions based on the information we have today. Absolutely. And yeah. what I find is when, sorry. Oh, absolutely. And, <laughs> and what I find is, you know, when we are able to show this information to our clients or when we are able to share this knowledge and information with clients, which is the purpose of me actually doing what I do and what I enjoy doing, they are able to realize how important it is to back this information with data and research. Fantastic. So you've been doing this for quite a while and obviously you've gotten a fair share of, um, you know, success when it comes to this uh, property investment. Can you, obviously, without giving uh, minute details, just share an example of a successful property investment that either you made for yourself or for a client and what actually made it successful. That way, if somebody is watching right now, they can actually start noticing, um, you know, what, what to sort of look out for when they're out there looking for property to invest in. Yeah, look, there's a lot of different examples. And one of the things, um, and one of the type of clients that I work with are new to market investors. You know, the investors that are looking to buy their first investment property you know, they're already nervous. There's a lot of media hype in terms of negative sentiment in the market. Um, they're not sure what to do. And they're the ones who actually need the help. Someone who already has a portfolio of, you know, three, four, five properties and have gone through that journey doesn't mean they don't need the help, but they probably don't need as much help as someone for the first time. So I'll share an example with you. Um, recently, I worked with um, I worked with a couple they owned their own home. They've got a couple of uh, children, young children, and they thought there's no way that we will be able to buy an investment property at the moment. You know, we will need to be working hard. They're both in, in, in good professional roles, and we just won't be able to buy it for the next five to seven years. Um, and the locations that they were thinking and the entry price they were thinking was just too high because they were, again, doing the same mistake of looking at locations where they lived as compared to where they could have invested. Uh, by having a strategy and by coming to a number that was comfortable, it wouldn't have put pressure. Uh, we were able to acquire a property for them. And that particular property, we were able to use the equity from the deposit or equity for the deposit. And this has now been almost, I would say, just over 12 months. And this property is cash neutral in current climate. That means it's costing them nothing every single month. It's costing them $0 every month to hold on to that particular asset and has gone up in value of close to about, you know, 50 to 60,000 from last uh, when I checked. Now, to me, that is a really, really good story because we did not impact their lifestyle. Whatever earnings they currently have, they're able to use that earnings to be able to still focus on you know basics of being able to go out for lunch or dinners or breakfast with their kids to be able to get them into that sporting activity to be able to enjoy that moment but on the other hand they still have an investment that is growing year on year and will continue to grow year on year which is not costing them anything to me that is a really really good passive income story for them and i'm sure you know 12 to 24 months from now we'll be looking at how do we acquire a second one for them so they can build onto that particular portfolio that their aim is for. Fantastic. And from what I'm just gathering from you, there's a lot of balance. There's a lot of, 
uh, stability. There's a lot of structure that, um, you know, comes with uh, the whole real estate investment and the way that you handhold your clients. Could that have all emanated from your time um, when you were young as a figure skater? Because that just looks like there's a lot of precision <laughs> that happens <laughs> in the way that you actually conduct your business. Yeah, look, um, I had a really good mentor when I started my business or my my working career, so to, so to call it. And um, one of the things that I was taught by my mentor, and you know, there's things that you hear and you listen, and sometimes you know they kind of get stuck in your head. Was always follow people and learn from people that have do that have done it, as compared to people that they tell you they know how to do it. So one of the things that I've always been focused on in my business as well is learning from others. And that's why I keep, keep on saying I'm still learning from other people. I still meet other industry professionals. I meet other advisors and I work with other investors. So we are always learning from each other to be able to grow. And that's the value. The knowledge is the value that we are able to share with our clients. And coming back to structure, yes, I'm all about structure. Um, it just, I feel comfortable when there is a structure. I feel comfortable when um, there is um, some help because, you know, while I had that in my journey, I knew, I know how comfortable it made it for my, myself. So I want to be able to deliver the same for my clients. Fantastic. Now, obviously you did mention that you had a mentor and, you know, we always need to be learning from those that have gone ahead of us because I believe we're here to live, to learn and to contribute. What sort of advice would you give to somebody who's probably just looking to get started um, out in real estate investing? Um, one of the key things would be if you are time poor, you don't have the time because you're busy in your work, whether it's professional uh, business or whether it's uh, you're employed, and which is majority of the case in uh, everyone's, um, you know, majority, everyone's in a similar boat. Do your research, align yourself with an industry professional or an advisor that you feel comfortable with and your ethos and their ethos and personalities match. Because at the end of the day, it's not a transaction that you're looking at. It's a relationship that you're looking at building. And once you are able to build that relationship, similar to what you would have with a doctor, similar to what you would have with an accountant, you will have a lot more smoother journey because you both understand each other and you're tapping into their resources, you're tapping into their knowledge, you're tapping into their expertise to deliver the outcome that you need. Absolutely. And if somebody's just watching this video now, Gurav, and thinking, wow, I really like what um, Gurav is saying, and I can see myself succeeding uh, in creating an investment portfolio that will actually start generating some sort of passive income, what will be the best way for people to start their journey with you or get in touch with you? The best way is um, you can either um, email me at uh, team at equimaxpropertygroup.com.au or you can contact our office on 1-300-943-232 um, and schedule a time um, with me. I'm happy to have an you know, introductory session. It does not cost you anything. And in that introduction, it allows me to understand your goals. It gives you a little bit more insight in terms of you know, how I work and the amount of data and the research that we focus on. And from there onwards, you know, we'll start our journey. Fantastic. I really appreciate your time today. And um, obviously, given that the media is making the whole process <laughs> of investing in property look like Tom and Jerry, um, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like a bloodbath out there. I just want to capture your voice on this one. How do you sort of see the real estate market uh, involving, evolving, say, in the next sort of few years? And what sort of implications might this have? For investors just predicated on what we're seeing in the market right now yeah look um media's job is to sell publications right and um they do a very good job in doing that um i don't believe everything that's in media because there's always an agenda so you know i always follow the data and i always follow the research and you know talking to industry professionals that's where i learn from where I see current Australian market um, I think we are in a very good position when it comes to industry 
Um, we are in a buyer's market at the moment, so to call it, because what you're looking at is property traders that normally come into property industry for a quick buck or come in for a short period of time are currently sitting on the fence or currently away from the market because our market is not currently going in this particular direction. It's quite stable in certain cities. In some cities, we've had some negative growth that were overinflated. But if I was to look at next you know, two to five years, a um, couple of different factors. We're not seeing any issue, any um, end to the war on Russia. That is um, you know, putting constraints on our supply and demand of products and services. We're not seeing any signs at the moment of um, labor or trade shortages that we're currently seeing in Australia. That means our cost of labor and trades is going up along with the raw material. We are at the lowest vacancy rate in Australia when it comes to rental properties. There is a rental crisis. There's a high demand of people actually wanting to go into those properties. More importantly, we're looking at now with immigration policies of close to about 200 to 260,000 migrants coming into Australia because we need skilled migrants because we have a shortage of workforce and they all need to live somewhere. Government ain't create, government is not creating enough housing to meet the demand. And it has to come from private equity. It has to come from private investors for them to be able to support that. So as an investor, it is a really good time to get into the market because all those factors are only going to benefit you in terms of getting your high rental yields and to be able to enjoy the growth that we're going to see over the next three to five years. Absolutely. I really appreciate your time. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as you would understand, property investment is actually an essential vehicle for you to actually maximize your wealth. But however, it does require a lot of knowledge, a lot of expertise, and a lot of guidance. And that's the reason why we brought people like Gurav here, who is well positioned to be a um, you know, giving advice when it comes to property investment. But as also um, noted at the start of this show, the information that we provided in this episode is only of a general nature. If you really need to, um, you know, sit down and get to the bottom of your property investment strategy, reach out to Gurav so that he can actually give you personalized advice. And as you have noticed, Gaurav's uh, passion is to educate others so they may actually invest in suitable properties in the right locations by sharing their experience and knowledge. Tap into the knowledge of those people that are already ahead in the game and are already um, you know, receiving success in the property investment game. Now, Gaurav, we could go on and on, but we've got markets to look at and we've got uh, more learning to do. So I really appreciate your time on the show today. Thank you very much, Prosper. It was a pleasure, pleasure talking to you. And uh, I hope, um, you know, your audience can get at least something out of it and um, love, love talking to you. Thank you for having me again. Oh, absolutely. Thank you.